All right. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Chris Munford, the founder of nethopper.io. And we're here today to give you a demo of our solution and the problems it solves. Um, so let's jump right in. Um, this is all about multi-cluster Kubernetes operations uh, for hybrid edge and multi-cloud. And uh, there are a number of uh, problems that, that that's a big space and there are a lot of problems in that space, but we wanna talk about two major ones that NetHopper is trying to solve. One is that the number of clouds is growing for most enterprise IT and application teams. Um, it used to be a small number like one, and now it's a much larger number. Um, there are several uh, Fortune 1000 companies that have published recently, um, uh, like a big financial company, I won't name, that they have 400 cloud instances. So the number of clouds is definitely growing and not slowing down. Uh, meanwhile, at the same time, um, applications are undergoing a major change from monolithic applications, one big application, to uh, microservices-based applications that are small little applications called microservices that need to communicate with each other. Each of these can be dependent, uh, developed independently and therefore can be developed a lot faster. So you can your, your apps become much more agile when you go down this microservices path. And this is what is causing all the rage for Kubernetes because Kubernetes perfectly suits microservices. However, Kubernetes um, runs on a computer and those computers are increasingly in a larger number, uh, ever growing number of clouds. So that presents a couple of problems. One is you need to place, place your containers in clouds in in which clouds. And those decisions aren't always easy and they change a lot. So you need to automate that process. And that's a big problem because then when you need to upgrade, you need to monitor, you need to troubleshoot. And NetHopper helps you um, place and operate your containers in the right clouds. However, um, those microservices still need to talk to each other or the app doesn't work. So you also need to move all these connections into the cloud. And if you've ever, like many IT teams do, if you've ever managed even a single connection between two clouds, there's a lot of connectivity and router tables and firewalls and load balancers that need to pre-programmed for each for each connectivity. And if a container were to change its location, all the networking connections need to change. This is a super dynamic world, and it's a big problem for microservices applications in, in clouds. And NetHopper solves this problem. So uh, I want to talk about the way people have been solving it until NetHopper came on the scene. And many still are solving it this way. And that is, if you have a number of containers, say nine containers across three clouds, first, you have to find a way to place them there. There's a number of ways to do that. There's automated ways. There's belt and suspender approaches. But it's a process you need to go through. Now, once you get the containers there, in order for them to talk to anybody, the recommended thing is to install a service mesh. And that allows containers to talk to each other. However, they're super complex. They generally take a team of people to deploy. Now, once you have your service meshes in place, uh, nobody talks to any Kubernetes cluster without an ingress. So to talk between clusters, you need to set up ingresses in each Kubernetes cluster. Um, and that can also be complex and require an integration and a team of people. And likewise, just because your Kubernetes clusters are ready, doesn't mean your clouds are. There's a number of, as I said before, firewalls, gateways, load balancers that need to be programmed. Those can be programmed and automated through infrastructure as code or by buying a third-party multi-cloud network platform. Either way, you're looking at a collection of, of at least nine tools on the left here, um, nine dashboards for nine tools that have to constantly be monitored. And that's a small application in a small number of clouds. So it can get very complex very quickly. And NetHopper has a much simpler way to do this. For those same three clouds uh, and nine containers, um, we help you get those containers to the clouds, to deploy them in the clouds and maintain them there. And then we very simply allow you to select one of them and connect it over a multi-cloud application network. There aren't nine tools. There's one tool, a single pane of glass. You go to nethopper.io, which we're about to do in demo, and you can deploy these containers and connect them very quickly. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, first, just as a reminder, the goal is software developers at this point, our software developers at NetHopper have created a demo app and it has two pieces, a front end, which is a web server and a back end, which is a database. Um, most microservices apps have dozens if not hundreds of microservices. This one just has two. And um, these are sitting here as images in our Docker Hub, in our public Docker Hub. And if you so like to, you can you can do exactly what I'm doing and download these exact containers if you want. 
But ultimately, we're going to put the front contain one container in a public cloud. It happens to be run by offered by our partner at Cox Communications. It's a Cox Edge cloud running in Providence. We're going to put our front end there. And we have another cluster running in NetHopper headquarters here just west of uh, west of Boston. And we're going to put our back end in that cluster. And of course, we're going to use NetHopper IO to both distribute those containers and connect them across clouds. Uh, and we're going to do it in the next 10 minutes, um, which is a lot of work to do in 10 minutes. So I will just jump right to it. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to minimize this window. And I'm going to show you the steps in the lower right hand corner here. But um, step one is to sign up for NetHopper. And I'll show you what that looks like. If you come to nethopper.io, you can read all about our products, use cases, our documentation. Everything's here at this single place, nethopper.io. And we also, rather than download our software and good luck, you can actually just sign right into our console. And when you click sign on our console, if you don't have an account, you're going to be prompted to create one. I already have an account, so it automatically logged in. Um, and I'm Mr. DevOps in my account. So I have a dashboard, and this is completely clean NetHopper install. I have absolutely nothing in the database. NetHopper doesn't know anything about this user. Um, and it says, we don't know anything about you. Could you please start by telling us about your clouds? So of course, in this picture, I'm going to tell them about the public cloud, the Cox Edge that I'm using, and the private cloud. Um, and I'll do this in a pretty simple way. Um, if you can sign up for Gmail, you can certainly do this. So to create a cloud, um, I'm going to create the public cloud first. So we'll call it Cox Edge. And because they have many of them, I'll call it Providence. Uh, and I'll say it's in Providence. And it's a Kubernetes cluster, and it's a type mini cube. And all things inside of NetHopper have the ability to have tags associated with them. It makes it very easy to organize a large number of objects. And I'm going to create a tag for this cloud because I know it's an edge cloud. I want to create an edge uh, cloud. I might have many cocked clouds in the future, and I want them all to be tagged as edge so I can make them all do similar things at some point in the future. I'll save that. And now I have a new type of cloud called Cox Edge. Uh, I'll define the other cloud, which is the, the local machine in my headquarters, headquarters one. It's in Boston. It's also Kubernetes, and it's running a mini cube. And this, I'm going to apply a different type of tag. I'm going to call this my private cloud, it's lowercase. So I'll, I'll apply a private tag. And now I have two clouds. I may have 50 clouds uh, that I'm going to add in here over the next couple of weeks, but I'm going to start with two. Now, once I have my clouds defined, the next step is to create an application network called MAN1, Multi-Cloud Application Network 1, and attach the clouds you just defined to that network. A network is kind of like a tenant. Um, you can have many networks, and they do not talk to each other. Um, so, oh, I made the mistake of already having one here. Pretend you didn't see that. So I, just to take a step backward, I'll delete that network. So you start out, I have no network, so you need to create your first one. I create a new network, and I'm going to call it, as the demo slide says, multi-cloud application network one. And then I'm going to simply attach clouds to this network. Um, for the two clouds to communicate, they need to be attached to the same network. So you can see I have my list of clouds here that I can attach. I'm going to start with the public cloud, the cloud that I know has IP address capability in it that I can get an IP address to. That's Cox Edge. And I'm going to make that my hub cloud. Hub clouds are things which have IP addresses. Um, they're on the public internet. And I'm going to call this, I'm going to make it part of a hub for redundancy. And I'm going to call it US. I'm going to add that cloud to my network. And you can see it shows up now. It's attached to the cloud, to the network. And I'm going to attach my other cloud, my headquarters cloud to it, except this headquarters cloud is super private. You can't get there over the internet. It's not addressable. Um, it has no inbound connections from the internet. So it's not a hub cloud, but I do want to easily connect it to my multi-cloud application network. So I'm going to connect it to that hub that I set up earlier. And now I have two clouds associated. And you can see there's a little bit of yellow on the page. Yellow always means you need to do something. So these clouds are uninstalled. Their status is uninstalled and I want to install them. Well, I happen to, the way people are typically managing their Kubernetes clouds today, is through something called uh, kubectl uh, or Kubernetes uh, uh, CLI, 
and I have one here running in my headquarters and I have one here running in my Cox Edge. And it's showing me all the things <clears throat> dynamically that are inside the Kubernetes. You can see both clusters are basically blank. They're brand new and they have nothing in them except the Kubernetes API. However, I'm going to, as the diagram says, I'm going to install these NetHopper agents. And rather than you getting a NetHopper PhD on how to install NetHopper agents, we've given you a simple button that says install my NetHopper agent. Here, I'm going to do it in my Cox Edge cloud first. And it's a simple matter of taking these instructions, which expire in an hour from now, and pasting them into my Kube control terminal. So I'm going to copy them to my clipboard. I'm going to go to my Kubernetes terminal in Cox, and I'm going to install those instructions. And you can see that the instructions have been issued, the instructions have been fetched. You can see I'm starting to download a number of things like a NetHopper agent, uh, which is from us. I'm also going to install some Scupper components, which is our cloud native router that we use, our data plane, and it's going to install the uh, NetHopper agent. <clears throat> so you can see I still have this headquarters. For them, for that site, I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to get my install instructions. I'm going to copy them to the board. I'm going to go over to my terminal for my headquarters machine, and I'm going to paste them in there. And that's going to do the same exact thing. Um, here I'm watching the Kubernetes cluster in real time. We're downloading an agent. Um, that agent is installing scupper components. And within a couple of seconds, uh, these routers will come up. So you can see I'm in the waiting for a router state. Headquarters one has come up. The other Cox Edge is taking a moment to come up and it'll come up soon enough. Um, while we wait for that, <clears throat> I'm gonna go over to the objects page. Okay, on the objects page, uh, you see three different sections. You see NetHopper objects. These are the objects that we're going to distribute to clouds. And we're gonna do that by creating a number of distribution rules, basically telling it which clouds you'd like to distribute to. Uh, and we have a session for foreign objects. Foreign objects are objects which are not under NetHopper's control, but you might want us to know about. For example, uh, um, in order to, let's say I have a cloud that has an object in it, like a container in it, and I want to copy it and, and push it to a hundred other clouds. I can do that very simply. And I'll actually do that with the front end and show you what that looks like. Uh, I happen to have a front end YAML file here. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll share this text file with you on, on YouTube down below. Um, there'll be a link to it, but if you copy this YAML and I go over to my in my picture, my front end is in my Cox cloud. So I go to my Cox terminal and I do a, that YAML has actually already been saved in a file here called front end deployment YAML. So if I do a, a kubectl apply minus F of that YAML, you can see I'm going to deploy a, a front end. So K okay, get deploy. And you can see now I have a front end running in this cluster in addition to my NetHopper and my Scupper components. And because it was put there by hand by me outside of NetHopper, um, it is now listed here as a foreign object. Now, it's nice to know that I have this foreign object up and running in my Cox Edge cloud, but I actually want to do something with it. And the thing I'm going to do with it is I have a couple of options. One, I can copy its YAML and do whatever I like with it. The other thing is I can actually import that object into NetHopper and it brings it up in a field and I'm just simply going to import the object and say yes. So now you can see I have one, my first NetHopper object. It's the deployment front end. It's actually distributed nowhere right now. Um, and because I don't need this foreign object anymore, I'm actually going to delete it. And you can see in the UI, I no longer have foreign objects, but I do have this NetHopper object called F front end. Now, ultimately, I would still like this object to be in my, pro in my Cox Edge cloud, and I'm gonna show you how to put there very quickly. So rather than dealing with a terminal and, and um, saving a lot of files um, in those terminals to try to apply objects, I'm gonna create a new rule 
and I'm going to say all rules look like this. All objects matching the top half of the rule will be deployed to all clouds matching the rule in the bottom half of this modal. So I want all objects <coughs> that are tagged. Oh, I don't have a tag yet. Actually, you can see this object has no tags, but I want to tag my all objects which belong in my edge clouds with an edge tag. So I'm going to go back in here and I am going to tag my front end, this object, my front end deployment with an edge tag. And now when I go to click create a rule, I say all objects that have a tag of edge, I want to distribute to clouds that have a tag of edge. Pretty simple rule. All objects that have a, that are tagged with edge are going to be deployed to all clouds that are tagged with edge. And I click save. So now I've made a distribution rule. And if you noticed on the page, we should have some sort of animation in the future. <laughs> the number of cloud distributions for this object have gone to one. If I expand the table, I can see this deployment front end is now deployed in one cloud, the Cox Edge cloud. So I've, I've just successfully deployed this object to the cloud. Um, and I could deploy lots of other objects that way to the cloud. But it turns out I'm going to deploy all my objects to the cloud in one fell swoop rather than doing them one at a time. <clears throat> and to do that, we support something called a bulk YAML ingest. So if you remember, I had this text file from where I pulled my front end. There's actually a number of objects in here. There's my front end, my back end, my front end service, and uh, my back end multi-cloud service. So I'm going to ingest them all at one time, that whole file. And I happen to know that file is sitting in my demo directory, in my engineering 2.0 directory, and I'm going to open it. And it says, oh, I've found four objects in this file. Um, one of them's already been created, this deployment front end, so I'm going to make no change there. But there are three new objects in these files. Would you like, if you click Save, you will import these objects. So I'll click Save. <clears throat> And now you can see I have four NetHopper objects. Um, and you can see that uh, three of them have been deployed to a cloud. Notice that what's in common is they're all edge objects. Uh, I have this deployment backend that if you notice from uh, the picture, I have a backend that's running in my private cloud, but it hasn't been distributed anywhere yet. And I'd ask why if uh, you could answer in real time, but I'll answer the question for you. It's because there's no distribution rule for um, private objects to private clouds. So I'll simply create one. I want all objects which are tagged with private to be deployed to all cloud clouds which are tagged with private. And if I had 100 private clouds, this object would be deployed to 100 clouds. And you can see that now my objects are deployed. Um, I'm actually going to delete this object for a second. Now, if we come back to the demo picture, I have a front end, I have a back end. Um, I've distributed the front end to one cloud, the back end to the other cloud. And now I actually have um, this is this front end has been exposed through a front end service to all browsers. So if you actually wanted to browse to this location right now, you could do it. Uh, I have a web interface uh, a browser open here uh, to that address. Again, it's open to the world. So you can see this demo right now. If you happen to, to point your browser to 98, 190, 77, 129 on port 8080, and you will see the demo app. And it says, welcome to NetHopper. You have reached the front end. This front end is running in a cluster named Cox Edge Providence. It is not connected to a backend. So I've successfully deployed all the components in my application for you to be able to browse to the app. Now, the app is still incomplete because it can't reach its database called the backend. And there might be lots of information there. Um, most apps get most of their information from a database, and we're not connected to ours right now. So the question is, how can we connect? Um, and this is a pretty difficult question to answer if you have two containers running in two different clouds if you're not using NetHopper. But I'm going to show you the very easy way to connect if you are running in two different clouds using NetHopper. What we're going to do is we're going to expose that back end to the front end. We're not going to move the data or the database over here. 
We're simply going to expose it to the front end in exactly the same way the front end wants to see all things which it can connect to through a Kubernetes service called backend. And the way we do that is very simple. You also don't need a PhD in routing, multi-cloud networking. You don't have to change a single firewall rule. <clears throat> what we're simply going to do is come into the UI and click on the object that we would like to expose, which is the back end. And there's a button right here that says, expose this object as a service. I'm going to click it and I get a bunch of information from that object. And I'm going to create a multi-cloud service. And while I'm at it, I know that I want to put this service that I'm exposing in my edge clouds because that's where my front end is. So I'm going to create a tag for it. <clears throat> and now I created a service and it was distributed to two clouds. Now the cloud where the service, where the deployment is in headquarters, in my private data center, and also in Cox Edge PVD. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if I look at Cox Providence and I ask it, what services do you have available? I can see now I now have a service called backend available. Even though there is no backend container running in this cloud, I do have the front end can now communicate with the backend. And you can see that it's communicating by querying these services. Once a second, it's trying to reach its backend. And you can see what the latency is, 28 milliseconds to get to the backend how many bytes are in and out of that connection, how many connections have been opened and closed. And if you come over to the app, you can see that now, not only is my app saying you've reached the front end, it's running in your edge cloud, but it's also connected to a back end in your private cloud named HG1. So this kind of concludes the demo. I have uh, deployed an application, had you browse to it, and then had that application connect to a remote database. Uh, all within about 10 minutes. So that's the kind of the conclusion of the NetHopper demo. Um, if you'd like to learn more or you have questions, please ask below in the YouTube chat or reach out to info at nethopper.io uh, and we'd be happy to answer any more questions. Um, uh, we're the leader in multi-cloud application networking. We enable you uh, application operators to view, distribute, and securely connect your apps seamlessly across multiple clouds, cloud instances, and cloud providers. We're uh, very secure based on open source Scupper, which is a large and growing community. Uh, we have a SaaS that's been available for about a year, and 200 customers have come to sign up for that SaaS. We hope you will too. Uh, and come and try it yourself at nethopper.io. Thanks a lot for your time today. Um, Claire, were there any questions that people asked during the, the webinar? No, we're good. OK. All right, so save your questions for uh, email or in the chat window in YouTube. Thanks a lot, and take care. Bye.